I've got my Bible open to the book of Revelation, chapter 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show to his, to his servants the things which must shortly take place. And he sent and communicated it by his angel to his bond servant, John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hears the words of the prophecy and heed the things which are written in it for the time is near verse 4 John to the churches seven churches that are in Asia grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne and from Jesus Christ the faithful witness the firstborn of the dead and the rulers of the kings of the earth to him who loves And released us from our sins by his blood and he made us to be a kingdom priest To his God and Father, to Him, to Him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. And our gospel said, Behold, He is coming. with the clouds and every eye will see him even those who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him so it is to be verse 8 I am the Alpha and the Omega says the Lord God who is and who was and who is to come the almighty I John your brother and fellow partaker in the tribulation and kingdom and perseverance which are in Jesus was on the island called Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice like the sound of a trumpet saying, Write in a book what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamon, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Verse 12, And I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me, and I haven't turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the middle of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed in a robe, reaching to the feet, and girded across his breast with a golden girdle. And his head and his hair were white like white wool, like snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burning, 
burnished bronze when it has been burned to glow in a furnace and his voice was like the sound of many waters and in his right hand verse 16 he held seven stars and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword and his face was like the sun shining in his strength and when I saw him I fell at his feet as a dead man and he laid his right hand upon me saying do not be afraid I am the first and the last the living one I was dead behold I'm alive forevermore and I have the keys I have the keys of death and Hades I have the keys you know whoever has the key it's got power I have the keys of the death and Hades right there for the things which will take place after these things For the mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven lampstands are the seven churches. Mm. Mm. In for a ride. Mm. How many of you are already blessed by just hearing the word that you just heard? Yes. Hallelujah. Woo. It's like I got transported to heaven for a minute there. But I still have my feet on earth. Growing up as a little boy, there was one book of the Bible I was warned not to read. You know what book? The book of Revelation. I was told if you read it, it will make you go crazy. A anybody ever told you that? Oh, maybe it was an African thing. I, I was told, I was told all sort of scary things about this book. I was told it's like watching a horror movie at night and so i grew up scared scared like a cat to read the book of revelation but the devil is a liar <laughs> you know why because verse 3 of revelation chapter 1 says this is the only book in the bible i will be blessed if I read it verse 3 says verse 3 says blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and hear the, the things which are written in it in this book did you hear that yeah. the angel of the Lord said to the Apostle John who was privileged enough out of all the disciples no wonder the, the Lord Jesus no wonder the Bible called him the beloved apostles he didn't give Paul this vision he didn't give Peter this vision he didn't give Andrew he didn't, he didn't give Bartholomew he didn't give Matthew he gave it to John John was privileged to write this book that the book of Revelation is the only book in the Bible in which there's a blessing for the person who reads and hears it read. 
When I was reading that book this morning, I hope you understand the blessing that was coming on your way. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for a blessing as we go into this series. See, the, see, church, church, the reason the devil wants to keep people away from reading this book is because he knows his doom is sure. But we've read the last chapter of the book. And we know who won the battle. The Lamb of God. The Lion of the tribe of Judah. The Root of Jesse. Wins. I said the Lamb wins. And so, if the devil can keep you from reading this victory book, then he can still go around like a roaring lion, pretending he's got the victory <laughs> when he has been defeated. But church, he is a liar. His wife is a liar. <laughs> And he is also the father of lies. This is a book of the overcomers. This is your book to read. And I'm wondering, do I have some overcomers in this house this morning? Do I have some overcomers? High five the person next to you. High five the person next to you and say, you are an overcomer. Come on now. High five the person next to you and say, you are an overcomer. It really doesn't matter. It, is, it really doesn't matter what you're going through. It really doesn't matter what you're about to go through. Ho, ho. But the word of the Lord to you this morning is, you are an overcomer. Amen. You're going to see that word said many times in the book of Revelation as we study. If you believe that you are an overcomer, Give the Lord your victory clap right now. Yes. Let the devil know. Let the devil know. Let the devil know that you are victory. You are an overcomer. Through the blood. Through the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Hey. Thank you. You may be seated. Please understand some pointers, some few pointers, as we get deep into this message. Uh, th these are preliminaries that you ought to understand as we get deeper into this message. This book is intended to be a revelation, not a mystery novel. Write it down. This book is intended to be a revelation. And not a mystery novel. The Greek word for revelation is the word apocalypsis. Everybody say that. Apocalypsis. All right. Oh, you're, you're speaking Greek now. The word apocalypsis means to unveil, to unveil, to reveal, to reveal. So this book is not intended to be a puzzle. Yes, there's some cryptic, cryptic languages in it and some alien creatures that you're going to be seeing full of eyes all around and within. Can you imagine seeing a creature come toward you full of eyes all over him and all around him? Uh, <laughs> that would scare you if you meet one of them creatures in the back alley somewhere. Oh, my wife said in the front only, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but all those things represent something. Some things that I explained for us in this book. Whether it be numbers, whether it be symbols, whether it be a creature, they are explained for us. Even in chapter 1, we already see the explanation of what the stars and the seven lampstands means. So you don't need Madame Ocus Pocus. To explain them to you. 
Also notice, as we're looking at the preliminaries of this book, this is not the book of revelations with an S at the end. I used to call it the book of revelations too. You know, because I got, I got to put an S at every word I say, like, like um, Sylvester and Tweedy. No, it's not revelations. It's revelation, singular, because it's one big revelation, one huge panoramic revelation, not of John, not of John, because I see some of your Bible title says the revelation of St. John divine. No, 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 no. It's not a revelation of John. This book is about who? L look at verse 1. Look at verse 1 in your Bible. Verse 1 of your Bible. What does it say? The revelation of who? I can't hear you, church. The revelation of who? Jesus Christ. So this book is really about the unveiling of Jesus Christ. It's about making Jesus known for all to see. That's why I've titled the message this morning, Jesus has never seen before. Jesus has never seen before. For centuries, people have often wondered, what does Jesus really look like? Oh, oh, to be sure, to be sure, for every people group, there's a picture. For every people group, there's a picture of what we think Jesus looked like. For every culture, there's a canvas painted. Come on now. Haven't you seen a black Jesus picture hanging on a wall somewhere? <laughs> or a blue hide blonde Jesus? It reminds me of the story of these two guys who have been arguing for years over whether Jesus was white or whether Jesus was black. Archie was sure Jesus was white. And Jack was just as sure that Jesus was black. As fate would have it, they both died in a car crash. And getting to heaven, they rushed to the pearly gates. And they said to Peter, St. Peter, please tell us, is Jesus white or black? We've been arguing all our life over this. About that time, Jesus walked up to them and said, Buenos dias, amigos. <laughs> c come on now, come on now, come on now. C c come on now. Don't you start. Don't you start with me. Don't you start pigeonholing Jesus. Don't you start pigeonholing Jesus into what you want him to look like. 